My name is George McHale. Uh, my name is Andrew Buckley. And we're the hosts of Nerds on the Run. Uh, I'm a comic book writer. And I'm a novelist, public speaker, and teacher. And uh, I'm known for uh, my comic book series, Cover of Darkness and Resilience. And I'm also a YouTuber. I have a channel called Inside Comics, and as well as a show called Inside Movies, where we review 80s and 90s action movies, for the most part, uh, with Andrew Buckley as well. That's me, because you forgot. Uh, I write the uh, series Her in All the Wrong Places for Miller Grade, uh, Paranormal Fantasy. I also have several other books on the market. I spend a lot of time, more time, talking about writing than actually writing, but I built a pretty cool career out of doing that. We're just really excited to be bringing this TV show uh, to you, and uh, we hope you'll check it out. Because we're super nerdy! Andrew, we're making our documentary, uh, Nerds on the Run. And I'm just like, what do you think we should do for this thing? A bunch of nerdy stuff, George. Like what though? Like, okay. well, <laughs> we're gonna think objectively about it. We have, um, this year is the 40th anniversary of Rambo First Blood. Right, yeah, I heard they have like a tank running over some cars. Yeah. Yeah. So we should totally go check that out. I love Rambo. We could like, yeah. we could wear like Rambo costumes. I think there's a, like, there's a costume contest for it. Yeah, which we would absolutely win due to our fantastic physique. All right, I'm going to get some costumes for sure. Okay, all right, cool. We got a local animation studio, Yeti Farm Creatives, right here in Cologne, BC, where we both live. So we could check that out, maybe tour the studio. That would be amazing. Yeah, they've worked on some really cool TV shows, like Hotel Transylvania mm -hmm. and lots of stuff. Like, that'd be neat. Yeah, that'd be pretty cool. That'd be pretty nerdy. Well, get on the phone and like start booking some of these things. I'll talk to the animation studio and we'll see if we can make okay, this happen. Okay, sounds good. Let's do it. Hey, man. Hey, Andrew. How's it going? <laughs> Good, how are you? I'm awesome, man. <laughs> okay, so what's all this crap? Uh, I bought costumes. Great. Look at this. Oh, it looks just like me. Yes. For the Rambo lookalike competition in Hope. Yep, I'm gonna look great in that. That's gonna look real good. That's gonna fit perfectly <laughs> on my own nipples. <laughs> and I got Yeti costumes, too. Cool. From yeah. the Yeti farm. No, I can, I can definitely. <laughs> what the yes. hell? What size did you get? This is for me. This is the extra large. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna say that's not. I'm, I drowned in that Yeti costume, but that looks that looks pretty awesome. <laughs> so I'm like super psyched to go to Yeti Farm. I can tell. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I love costumes like so much. No kidding. Yes. These ones even say like Yeti to party on them. No, it's pretty cool. <laughs> I'm not I'm not saying it's not cool. It's actually really hot. Like really, really hot. I can't wait for like Todd Ramsey to like, he's the guy who like runs Yeti Farm over there to see us walk in on. Dressed like this? Yeah. Are you gonna tell him that we're gonna be dressed like this? No, no. Oh, well that would be a nice surprise for him. <laughs> what, what are we even gonna talk to those guys about though? Cause like, I don't really know. Well, they've been, they've done some pretty cool animations, right? I mean, they've worked on high-end properties. Yeah, they've done like Sonic and Hotel Transylvania, mm -hmm. lots of cool stuff. I don't really know how like animation is like made. Like I know like, like long time ago, they had like the different lenses and the, and they would like actually film it like in camera, like the layers, the background. But now I think it's like done on computers. But I, like, do you have to be a good drawer to like to be a, in animation, or can you just be good at computers? Or that that would be a great question to ask. I don't know. I don't know anything. No, I mean I have a rough idea, but I don't. It's probably different than what I have in my mind as to what, how it's actually done. Yeah, I can't wait to get to, to Yeti Farm and, and talk to Todd and the whole mm -hmm. team there and see what's see how, how animation gets made. Yeah, it's gonna be pretty awesome. We're here at Yeti Farm Creative in beautiful Kelowna, BC, Canada. We've got our sweet Yeti costumes on and uh, we're gonna get a tour of the studio and meet owners Todd and Ashley Ramsey. Let's go! Let's go. I'm here with uh, Todd Ramsey, owner and founder of Yeti Farm Creative. Todd, thanks for being on the show. You're welcome. What's your origin story? How did you get started in, uh, in animation? Uh, I basically flunked out of everything in high school. Uh, the one thing I got A's in was art. And when I wrapped up high school, um, I just 
discovered animation and kind of fell in love with it. It was the time Toy Story was coming out. So I wanted to move to, move to Vancouver because animation didn't exist in Cologne at the time and wanted to move to Vancouver and learn CG animation. But in order to take CG, I had to take a 2D animation program first, classical animation. And I had so much fun with that, just with the hand-drawn stuff that I didn't want to take CG after that. So here I am today, still doing hand-drawn animation. Ashley, tell me about your role here at Yeti Farm. I am the co-founder and CEO. So I am mostly in charge of um, frontline acquisitions, any kind of strategic partnerships, business development, um, and now wrapping sort of a little bit of culture under my role as well. And future trajectory and planning for the company. Very cool. What are the steps to making an animated show or a movie? Uh, so it's a, it's a big process and we don't do everything here at Yeti Farm. Uh, most of the time we'll have a client that if we're doing a service job, uh, the, the scripts and the sound records, voice records will be done at another studio. They will send that to us and then from there we will do the storyboards. Um, then it goes into the animation department and then post-production after that. Uh, some of our own intellectual properties, we will develop them in-house. So we do all the all of the original designs for those. Um, but yeah, there's a, there's a lot of steps to go over and I think it varies depending on, on the shows that we're making, whether they're our properties or a service, service job for someone else. Cool. I know Yeti Farm has this wonderful long resume of work. Can you tell me a little bit about the different kinds of projects that you guys have produced? We've done pretty much every style of animation you could think of. Um, we focus mainly in the Harmony pipeline, so uh, 2D animation. Uh, we've produced everything from Pete the Cat to Hotel Transylvania to Max and Ruby. And we've also contributed to some CG shows as well, um, such as Beat Bugs for Netflix and um, a variety of different other little CG projects for other studios. So. You guys are responsible for Max and Ruby? We produced uh, one of the seasons with another studio, yes. Ugh. I watched so much of that stupid show. Because <laughs> of my kids. It's pretty cute. It's adorable. Where are the parents? Where are the parents? That was always my question. It's not as bad as Caillou, but it's up there. How has the process of animation changed over the years since, you know, ye olden days? So, when I was graduating from film school, everything in, in Canada was still done in pencil and paper. And then a software called Flash came out and it was a way to um, produce animation at a lower cost. And animation didn't have to get sent overseas um, to be hand-drawn. And so I think my generation was kind of the first to learn the software, and that's how we got the work. And then it's evolved from there to, um, 2 D's kind of the same, the same principles of animation apply. So you still have that sort of 2D approach and feel. Um, but yeah, just using different softwares now and shortcuts to, to make things faster. As far as the animation process is concerned and who you guys hire as animators, do you have to be really good at drawing to be an animator these days or has that kind of shifted with everything going digital? Yeah, we have a pretty great blend. Um, we hire from different programs. Um, we have some traditionally trained artists and some technical trained artists, but generally a really good sense of anatomy and drawing is really important, um, just in terms of movement. And ev because every show is so different, having a diverse skill set is really important. Um, but technical knowledge is also quite a heavy backbone to our pipelines because it's all um, software based. So. Makes sense. Yeah, it's an interesting blend of brain power. <laughs> yeah, different than it used to be for sure. Yeah. Uh, so what makes like a good animated uh, show? Like what, what makes animation so special? So I think it's, for me, um, growing up and watching cartoons, I think it can be pushed so much further than live action. I mean, you can take an animated character um, that doesn't exist and, and push the boundaries of that character, whether it has three eyes or whether it's an animal that, that can talk. And um, you can make it move and bend any way that you want that doesn't really um, work with normal anatomy. Um, so, But that's like on a scene to scene animated basis. But as far as story goes too, I think you can uh, kind of write around animation and, and push the boundaries that way and, and uh, sort of come up with a shot that would cost, you know, $10 million to produce in live action and be able to, to draw that same stuff and add effects and, and come to a, a similar thing. And, and the humor too, the primetime stuff, I really enjoy. Uh, 
Yeah. <laughs> uh, what is next for Yeti Farm? Like, what's the future hold? Like, what are you guys seeing five years, ten years out as far as what you guys are going to be accomplishing? Sure. So, yeah, we started as an animation engine, more of a service studio for other studios. And now in our 15th year anniversary, um, we've spent the pandemic, um, it's been a long journey, uh, developing our own intellectual properties. So we have two of them that are really gaining traction right now. One of them is going into its third season, and that's a 2D preschool property called Sweet Tweets. And the other one is called The Geos, and it is a partnership with Chorus and Nelvana. And we're just in the process of securing our international partner again to finance it. Uh, and we have another sort of growing slate of acquisitions we're doing. And one of the areas th that represents some of that slate is in the YouTube space. So we're looking to strategically partner with influencers that are already on YouTube, have followings that want to expand their brand into animation. And that's where we're really focused right now, away from the traditional streamers while they work out their stuff. We're going more towards independent producers who can just fund and go. And that's provided us with some wonderful opportunities. Um, Alpha Betas is the latest series that we're producing. We're just wrapping up four more episodes. We did a pilot and it's based on um, YouTube influencers who game, and so their voices are the characters and they are the characters, and that's with Vanoss Gaming and Three Black Dot. And they're launching things like publishing, so again, graphic novels, um, comic books, merch, so we're really excited about that whole space, and that's where we're putting some focus at the moment. So yeah, I'd say intellectual property for kids and family, and then um, producing content for new types of creators, so. That's amazing. Yeah. It's yeah. exciting times. And the, yeah. the fact that you're being so adaptive and forward thinking, I mean, that's gotta be, it's gotta be very exciting times for Yeti Farm. All right, so just to put you on the hot seat for one last question, uh, Looney Tunes or Mickey Mouse and Friends? Who you got? Uh, I think Looney Tunes. Yeah. yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I think uh, just the boundaries being pushed a little bit more. Uh, both are amazing animated. But yeah, I think I the older skewing for sure. I think I'm right there with you. Uh, Todd Ramsey, thanks for being on Nerds on the Run. Yeah, thank you for having me. Awesome. Nerds on the Run! All right, all right, come on out. Oh, just look at the sexiness of this whole thing. Are you wearing that shirt the right way around? I think so. I don't know. I feel like it's my nipples really are... It's not really encompassing. It looks a little bit OnlyFans-ish. <laughs> <laughs> it's dangerously close. I'm popping out. It's so close. What You're do gonna... you think? Could I win? Uh, what? <laughs> the Rambo lookalike competition. You know what? It's going to be a close call between you and, you know, every single other person who's there. But uh, that is that is something. That is that is something. <laughs> I'm, I'm very impressed with all of that. I need, like, a bow and arrow, too. Oh, yeah, no doubt. That would... That, that would You'd be a shoe to win if you had a bow and arrow with that outfit. Some giant knife. We need some more props. We need more props. How much more budget do we have to spend on costumes? Because you need to you need to add to this. <laughs> but damn, that that even that hair, that is some that you look like you're in a seventies cover band. That's really good. Really good. Uh, the facial hair has gotta go though, man. That's not gonna fit. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, I don't think it's not gonna work. I have such a weak chin though. You do <laughs> No, I'm sure it's a super strong chin. I, I mean, I've never seen you without a goatee, but I think today should be that day. Uh, I do want to win this thing, like, really bad. Yeah, that makes sense. There was only, there's only, like, one way to do that. Oh, God. How long you had this beard there, oh, George? Oh, uh, years, man. Really? When's the last time you were clean shaven? I can't even remember. Oh. Oh, no. Oh, it's painful to watch. Oh, you do have a weak chin. This is a horrible era. <laughs> wife is gonna leave me. Oh. I don't know if she's using that like tank top. I could be like Tom Selleck as Rambo. Yeah, it's a, you actually have a very well-defined mustache. Never noticed that about you before. Oh yeah, that's, that's good stuff. Oh. <laughs> don't need the hair. You <laughs> All right, I'm done. Yeah? yeah how, do, how do you feel about it? How do you feel about yourself? I'm disappointed in myself and <laughs> my life choices. <laughs> how long will it take to grow back the beard? It will grow back real fast. It's not that great. No? It might take 
It might take a month or two. Oh, you look very different without it. I feel like I don't even know you anymore. <sighs> yes, the shaven wonder. All right, now it's your turn. You gotta get on that muscle chest. I don't wanna wear the muscle chest. You gotta do. I, I don't want it. I ordered it all the way from China. This, well, it came all the way from China. <laughs> Behold. <laughs> oh. It's pretty, it's pretty good looking. I mean, this is, it's all, it's nice, right? It looks good. Sexy, man. This sex, Dead this six sexy. pack and this. Oh, well, yep, it's, it's pretty well defined. I like it. You look like the wolf man in the arms. Because of the hair, I get it. I, get it. I, I, shave, I shave everything else, but I, I keep the arms for the oh natural look. It's pretty, it's pretty great. Yeah, it's, and it feels, I mean, it feels actually kind of gross and disgusting. I'm a little slimy on the inside, and I think I'm sweating this. But honestly, George, come touch these nipples. These are amazing. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> uh, well, this is yeah. I'm gonna gonna kill this uh, this Rambo contest. <laughs> this whole this whole get up. Uh, I'm not gonna shave the beard though. I'm gonna, gonna keep the beard. Come on, dude. Come no, in it. No, no, uh, no. If you think you have a weak jawline, you should see my jawline under this. This is this stays. This this is enough. This is commitment on my part to slide into this thing. <laughs> Hey there, we're in Hope, British Columbia, filming location of First Blood. This month is the 40th anniversary since they made the movie 40 years ago right here in the city. Yeah, and they're doing a special event today. All sorts of festivities are going on. They're gonna run over a bunch of cars with a tank. Yeah, that's gonna be awesome. That's gonna be wicked. Uh, actor Stephen Chang is here. There's a uh, Ryan Villiers is here. He does all the uh, awesome wood sculptures of uh, Rambo around town here. I can't wait to like get in and explore the city today. What a great day. It's a beautiful day for it. Hey, I'm uh, with Peter here and we're in Hope, BC and he's getting ready to run over a bunch of cars with this tank. That's so insane, man. Uh, where did you get this thing from? So I have a mutual friend with the previous owner and this one came out of the States and previously, before that, came out of Australia. Oh, okay. And how old is it? This is a 1955 Centurion, so... Wow. And this is your tank? Yes. That, yep. I didn't even know you can own a tank. That's insane. Yeah, there's some rules and regulations around it, but it's possible. Yeah. And what, what are one of these things like run you? Like, how much does this cost? So I paid a little over 100000 for this. Wow. That's nuts, man. And, and you can just drive it down like Main Street? And... No, no, no. So um, I'm only allowed on streets when I'm get permitted and whatever else. So events like the, the one here will uh, get a permit for me to do it. And then it gets low bedded wherever it needs to be. This is so cool. And you're actually going to drive over the car. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Is there like, is it dangerous? Like, is a car going to like blow up? Um, it depends how I hit it. Sometimes glass sprays, but it's never really that big a deal. I am so psyched for this, <laughs> man. I can't wait. Uh, thank you for being a part of uh, this 40th problem. anniversary. Hey, wait a minute. Is that my shit? It looks just like your car. Oh my god. Oh, and now he's backing up. Do you get to drive in the HOV lane if you have a tank? You drive wherever the hell you want if you have a tank. Oh, you squished it real good. <laughs> <laughs> That sounds oddly sexual. <laughs> oh yeah, he's squishing that car. <laughs> Whoa!
Oh my god, it's like a kid gonna fall right off of it. <laughs> they almost lost a child. I'm here at Rambo Fest with Stephen Chang, decorated actor, star in uh, Rambo First Blood. Steve, what's it mean to be a part of this legacy? It's not a star, it's a VC commander. You're a VC commander? It was huge. Captured a star and cut stars a chest. Rambo has always been a hero, but I am the only one that out Rambo Rambo. You did out Rambo Rambo. Yeah. Was it fun to torture Sylvester Stallone? Uh, to me, yes. Not everybody. <laughs> not everybody? <laughs> because I have a knife in front of the chest. You're going to respect me. That's true. <laughs> so what's it like being here 40 years later? Um, every five years we have a celebration, yeah. you know, and this year, look at this, that's hope! <laughs> awesome, thank yeah. you so much, Steve, really appreciate it. Tell us? That's it, tell us, yeah. Oh, tell us, you can say. Check by out. the way, I am a Talos customer for, you know how long? It used to be, earnest was BC Tell, and then that they sold it, and I continue for 40 years. You're, you're a loyal customer. So 40 years in business, 40 years with Talos. Oh well, yeah, I got discount. You got, so you should now. <laughs> I already got it. Okay, thank you. That was a I'm here with Ryan Villiers here at Rambo Fest. Ryan is a famous carver. Is that, is that fair? Can I say famous carver? Put any fair? title on you want. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he's responsible for a lot of the carvings around Hope, particularly the Rambo ones that is, you know, ties in nicely with today's festival. Uh, tell me a little bit about what you do. Oh, I uh, carve wood with chainsaws for a living. And, cool. Uh, it's a pretty cool adventure. Uh, yesterday, we just unveiled the sheriff on the other end of town there. Oh, so that's brand new. That's brand new. That was unveiled yesterday. Nice. Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah, it's pretty cool. How long does it take to do something like that? I don't depends on the ambition. Uh, I think those pieces I work five to six weeks on, some days are two-hour days, some days end up being 12, 15-hour days. It all depends. That's not that bad. That sounds super easy. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Just out my back door and in my garage, so it's pretty good. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> um, what got you into doing this? I saw it on TV. There was a TV program several years ago chainsaw carvers. I saw it, fell in love with it immediately, went out and bought a chainsaw and the rest is history. That's crazy. Yeah, addic yeah. It's an addiction, watch out. <laughs> so word of warning, if you, you know, see it, if you get inspired by Ryan, you may be doing this for oh, yeah. yeah. All right, part of Rambo Fest is the Rambo Lookalike Contest, so we figured we would enter for some reason. And uh, George even went as far as to shave off his beard. I know. Which made him look like that. <laughs> That's dedication. I'm so psyched for this thing. We're gonna win, right? We, we oh, gotta, without a doubt. We gotta win. One of us so will good. win, and if you and I don't win, we also dress Catherine up to look like a little mini Rambo, <laughs> and gave her a buddy suit and fake abs and such. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So definitely one of these three will for sure win the contest. Yeah, let's go. Okay, the gun. Don't do it, Rambo! We didn't win. This I, thing was rigged, man. This, I, I don't get it. I don't get it at all. We look fantastic. I mean, look! Look! Yes. Your nipple is almost out. It, that deserves a win. This is a lot of armpit. It's a ton of armpit. It's a lot of armpit. Next time. Next time. <laughs> Ten years from now, we'll come back and we yes. will win this thing. Hey, Gord, tell me a little bit about what you're doing here today at Rambo Fest. So we're here uh, supporting the uh, uh, Village of uh, Hope with their 40th anniversary. This is our second time in a row to uh, do an event like this, not to this degree. Uh, and it just, it's the glove that fits the hand. So what we're doing is, uh, on, the, on the museum side is preservation, education, and preserving a piece of military history. Some of this stuff was used in the actual shoot. Some of the vehicles that are on the other side of the road. There are some of uh, the weapons, per se, that were used in the movie set. And there's stuff that was in close proximity of style and layout. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, so at this particular event, we got so many fans of the movie around. Like, uh, how's the response been, I suppose? Overwhelming. Yeah? Yeah, totally positive, overwhelming. That's awesome. Yeah. All right, thank you so much, Gordon. I really thank appreciate you. it. <laughs> How does it feel to be dead? What are you doing? Stop playing around. I got a helicopter ride. All right, we're about to go. Hey, I'm here with Brad uh, from Valley Helicopters. 
and uh, we're about to go up uh, in the air and I'm super psyched. Um, Brad, uh, your father uh, actually helped with the production of uh, First Blood 40 years ago. Yes, I believe he brought the location scouts to Hope and to their fellow tunnels. That is so cool. Um, I've got one question for you. If you throw a rock at a helicopter, will somebody fall out of it and die? Only if you throw the rock in the right place. <laughs> <laughs> and you might not die. You might not. Okay, good. I'm gonna keep. I'm gonna put my seatbelt on just in case. Probably a good idea. <laughs> yeah. Uh, here we go! And we're going up. There is a village of Hope, BC. I can just imagine John Rambo running around about the mayhem and destruction down there. Can we go upside down? And there's the ravine where they filmed part of the movie. It's so pretty up here! Whoa! Oh man, this is so majestic. I feel like a soaring bald eagle. Remember in Rambo 3 when Stallone flew up that helicopter with a bow and arrow? That was awesome. And ridiculous. What about when Hank drove into the helicopter? Nah, that was dumb. Why wouldn't the helicopter just pull up? Oh, we're going back down now. This was amazing. Oh, dude, that was amazing. Yeah, it was crazy. The views, everything, it was absolutely terrifying. I am, I am glad to be back on the ground, though. That was, that was a little scary. Well, when he banged sideways, and then banked the other way sideways, and then the whole helicopter was sideways, and then your daughter suggested we should flip upside down. That was all, all terrifying. It was, yeah. But, but beautiful, gorgeous, great way to end the day. Yeah, absolutely. Beautiful way to close out our tour, our tour to Hope and see the Rambo Festival. Absolutely. So Andrew, we're coming to the end of our behind the scenes look at Nerds on the Run. What should we do for the rest of the show when it comes out next year? Uh, we should totally go and check out Electronic Arts. They got the huge video game studio down there in Burnaby where they have do all the, uh, the EA Sports games. We can go check that out. That would be super cool. Um, you used to go to Vancouver Film School, right? Yes, indeed. I was a film school grad. Do you think you could get us uh, in there? Oh yeah, it's been like 22 years, but they'll remember me. You do make an impression. I really do make an impression. I would like to go to uh, Hatley Castle. That's the filming location for the X-Men movies. That would be absolutely amazing. We could be X-Men, George. That's like my dream. Mine too. <laughs> All right, well, uh, watch for us uh, next year when Nerds on the Run, the TV show debuts. It's gonna be amazing. <laughs>